All right, hello everybody and welcome to the next session of the first day of the Advanced Content Marketing Summit. My name is Clayton Wood. I'm coming to you from San Francisco, California. And what an exciting uh, day. We've had a bunch of different uh, types of sessions talking about content marketing. Neil opened up um, and you just heard from Hello Bar. And thank you all for being here. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to uh, get into the session and sort of filter in here. And then I'll get started. Uh, before I do that, though, I wanted to remind everybody about our networking platform that we've partnered with. Now we see uh, a lot of people giving their emails and their LinkedIn's. And that's cool. We understand you want to connect with relevant people that are like-minded and we encourage that. So much so that we've partnered with a really exciting uh, top tier networking platform. So uh, if you've got the all access pass, you've got a 100% spot on the networking platform. It's called Brella, B-R-E-L-L-A. And what it does is that it allows you to fill out a profile, tell everybody what you're looking for or what your skill set is, and then it matches you with people that, uh, that you think that it thinks would be relevant. Now you can schedule meetings, set up a time, adjust your calendar so that you can very easily make those connections in a real world kind of way. One of the coolest things about all of these conferences, these virtual summits, is the people that are here. Um, in the past we've had over 30,000 registrations and we know that everybody's uh, excited to meet people so we want to facilitate that so if you haven't got a spot in the networking platform um, let us know and uh, it's for the all access pass holders and without further ado I'd love to introduce our next speaker so today 1 p.m. top of the hour uh, in at least in the West Coast we've got a special speaker coming from Austin Texas Michael Danner so Michael is uh, it does marketing at Axe Wellness, and Michael has taken Axe from almost nothing to 16 million monthly views, which is incredible. Today, he's going to teach us how he did that, and hopefully will give us a lot of good information on how we can do that too. So the title of the session is The Road to 16 Million Monthly Visitors and How You Can Do It Too. Michael, thanks for joining us. How are you today? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. Thanks, Clayton, for the introduction. Absolutely. Well, we can hear you loud and clear, and it looks like people are coming into the session. Uh, so you're coming from Austin, Texas. Is this home base for you? I actually just moved here on Friday. I'm actually from Nashville, and so it's uh, it's fresh fresh experience all around. Awesome. I've got family in Nashville. Well, welcome. Um, I'm sure it's uh, it's a little bit of a, a a different sort of season in your life since you just moved, but I'm sure you'll get settled very soon. And we're excited to hear from you today. Before the tele or before the live broadcast, uh, I was just talking to you how you know Neil. Um, and it's amazing the network that this guy has around people that have built successful content marketing brands. So we're really excited to hear about what you've done with Axe Wellness. Uh, just for everybody's expectations, we're going to have Michael present to, for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll take questions. So if you've got a question, Put it in the Q&A section below the screens where you see us on and let other people upvote it and we'll try and get it answered for you. Michael, if you want to uh, go ahead and share your screen, I'll let you get to it and uh, the audience is all here and ready to go. That sounds great. All right. How about that? You guys see the, uh, the mountain? Bingo. Yeah, we sure do. And, and for the audience, if you guys could give me a thumbs up, if you can see Michael's screen and hear him, and then we'll be off to the races here. Let's see. So we're going to focus the screen. There you go. And go ahead, man. Thanks for joining. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, guys. And uh, let me know if there's uh, any complications with the setup. I'm using kind of a presenter mode. And I'm excited, though. And uh, yeah, thanks, Clayton. And thanks, Neil, uh, for just uh, offering me the chance to speak. Uh, so I guess this is, a, I, I picked this uh, photo here because of uh, I find it to be appropriate that you know 16 million has been just kind of a whirlwind, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk over some of that stuff there. But the beginning to this uh, would be, for me, there was something at the beginning that we were we were we were growing a lot, we were trying things, we were doing things, but it was this this epic feat of trying to figure out why we wanted to climb such a big mountain and become, you know, the number one nutrition health website in the world. And I was looking up uh, some quotes and different things for this for this talk, and I realized that there was this. Uh, uh, there was the, the most famous three words in mountaineering 
are the, it was asked for the, I think it was the first guy who climbed Mount Everest. And he said, why did you climb Mount Everest in the first place? And he replied back these three words and said, because it's there. And it's just the sheer challenge of everything. So I'm hoping that uh, today can be exciting. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to learn some stuff just because it's fun or interesting. And then some people who make our, our living off of it. Some people we do, you know, we're paying for uh, kids college I was off of it, all that kind of stuff. But I hope that uh, I think I think the 3000 or so people that are here, we're all just equally excited and kind of nerds at heart about SEO and, and how to apply it in a, in a broad scale way. And I hope that today's uh, an inspiration for that. And uh, yeah, part of that quick note, uh, this is going to be mostly kind of a case study in our story on how we applied a lot of the stuff that you're learning at conferences and summits like just like this. It's not going to necessarily be the most cutting edge uh, pieces of it and how to do that. But I hope that it's inspiring and that you can see that a bunch of kids who really just had no idea what they're doing and arguably still don't know what they're doing, you know, are, are actually well past 16 or heading to well past 16 million. And I hope that's a uh, I hope that's inspiring and encouraging for you all today. So uh, if you don't know, uh, Axe Wellness is actually just our kind of our like, you know, official legal name, uh, Axe Wellness LLC. And we actually perform under the label Dr. Axe and the tagline for our company is food is, ed food is medicine. And that's actually a picture of me on the right there, uh, as well as a picture of my beautiful wife. Um, she's, she really enjoys <laughs> pies and books and men just laughing in general. And so uh, today I really want to cover five things, which is where we've come from and a few things that we're going to, that we do fairly well. And a few things that we're going to get better at uh, that we that we're noticing right now that we want to get that's hopefully uh, hopefully offers you guys some like sentiment towards like where even though even though we have a lot of things right there's still things that we're not doing well yet and we'd love uh, I'd love just to engage in a conversation during the Q and A step five there and then number four uh, which is some advice that we wish we'd had when we started so if we zoom back 31 months ago uh, I didn't I didn't know who. Uh, I didn't know anything about digital marketing. I didn't know anything about sales funnels. I didn't know anything about, I knew a little bit about content marketing because that's what I was reading in my free time. Uh, but that was, uh, even that was very, very beginning stages. And so I would say that uh, if you guys have been doing marketing longer than three years, you've already got a head start on me. And so hopefully uh, this is encouragement and action just to say, hey, how can we just, uh, uh, if, he, if he didn't know anything what you were doing and, we, and they can do this, that you guys have infinite advantage over me. And then, uh, so back, back 31 months ago, uh, I was interviewed and hired at a Whole Foods and for a company that sells natural health, uh, education and medicine and programs and all that kind of stuff. This is a, this is a really fun, uh, kind of, you know, fortuitous, if you will, or foreshadowing rather is probably a better word about where, uh, where we'd all began. We couldn't afford an office at the time. And so I was uh, interviewed and hired at the local Whole Foods in Austin, uh, which is incredible. And when I sat down for the interview, there was, uh, the website was in the middle of being uh, ported over by a black box developer. I don't know if you guys have ever worked with somebody like that, where uh, when you don't know what you're doing and the developer's like, don't worry about it, I'll just take care of it. And uh, Josh, Dr. Hacks, he's sitting down, he's asking me like, hey man, what's going on with my website? To get my developers not telling me anything. He's just saying that it's just gonna be more expensive next month than it was last month, and he said it was last month too. And I was like, dude, I think you might be taking, be being taken for a ride. And we hadn't known each other, we just kind of sat down and met. And so we started answering questions. And uh, this is uh, this is the classic contractor fallacy that if you hire you know these contractors, these people who can promise the world that all of your dreams are going to become true. And uh, it was just it was just a really fun, uh, really fun and early time for us because we just didn't know what we were doing uh, on all kinds of fronts. But we were gonna, we were willing to go and take action anyways. So for the rest of 2015, when I got hired, uh, I was the first, or actually it was the second in that year that was hired that year. We actually ended up hiring a person a week. For the rest of that year and we were just growing and growing and growing and growing we had to move offices four times in the next 12 months uh this is a picture of our 1200 square foot offices our first office that we got after we moved out of a co-working space and it was uh at, you know we were doing the math trying to figure out how many people we needed to hire and uh, we unfortunately found out about the same time that we found out we needed to hire an extra 50 people that year uh we realized that we had uh, we'd realized that we'd signed a lease for a 1200 square foot office for i think five and a half years and so that was a, that was a fun and early time and this is a picture of the office now. It's a, it's it's a inspired off of Google and the large glass offices, and it's just beautiful. And so, in 2016, we launched a brand new class of uh, protein, and we did all this kind of stuff. We're in 5,000 stores. We're almost at 2 million fans on Facebook. We became Inc. 500 uh, last year, and then we just they just announced it last week that we did it again. We're number 30 in the country. And of course, how is all of this possible? Well, the real answer is that it was SEO. That um, a lot of it has to do with oh, and of course, you know, uh, Neil and his advice on all things, but we're gonna to get to that in just a minute. So if we could step back to 2014, there was, uh, there was an interesting time. So this is a year before I joined the company and what they were really focusing on was trying to bring people to our gorgeous website, which as you can see, every website probably begins something like this. And then we tried to get your email 
And then it, it's kind of funny, we're at 1.9 million fans on Facebook and we're actually, it, at the time of this screenshot, we had 1.9 thousand fans on Facebook and that is, uh, that's been a rush uh, in, in just a, in, a, in very, sh what feels like a very short amount of time, also very, very long period of time. And then we didn't even have a lead magnet with all the stuff that uh, Lindsay was talking about, tripwires and making sure congruency, we didn't have any of that and we were just writing content and going anyways. And then uh, if we're really lucky and you, you liked us enough and you read some of the content or you listened to us in the radio, you bought our, pretty much our only product, which is First Fit uh, Fitness Program, which is really, really fun. So, and in 2015, when I got hired, uh, let's just take a look at some of the stats here. This is a, this is a, uh, what, uh, at this point, Josh had sold his chiropractic clinic. He was a chiropractor by trade and nutritionist, and he was an Olympic coach. Uh, he's just, he's just the man in, in so many capacities and so authentic towards his message. And he started this company uh, really out of a, out of a, out of need, seeing that people were missing information and they're miss, missing information in a very, like, it, it was, there was lots of information in books. There was lots of information available, but it was not necessarily super consumable in the, in the formats that you needed, uh, in the formats that you needed to be like when you're searching for something, like when you have an ailment or you have an illness or something that you wanted to be fixed right away, you don't go to the library and ask the librarian for what to do. You start searching for it. And so, uh, we started putting in all this content and investment really because Josh was, you know, he, I think, I think he said he had, uh, they were, they went from zero patients at the beginning of his first year, uh, of his clinic to within less than a year, he had over a thousand patients coming in a week. And so imagine if you have a thousand patients coming in a week, that there is a lot of opportunity to repeat yourself. And so eventually he started, you know, writing uh, newsletters to his, uh, to his fan base and to his uh, customers so that they could then send the newsletters off to their family. And then he was like, well, maybe I'll just write it on the website and then I'll put a link to it in the newsletter. And that's really kind of how we got started. Not because we read some epic blog post about how to do skyscraper content and, and then, you know, try to, you know, dethrone the number one natural health website in the world. We just really did it because we, he just saw a meet in Nashville and uh, we just kind of start, uh, started extending ourselves out from that, that kind of core center base. So in 2015, when I got hired, we were number 15 as far as the world's uh, largest uh, natural health website. You can see over there, I think that's uh, 28,000, uh, the 28,000th website in the world, according to Alexa, number 15 in our scoring. And at that point, you know, if you didn't have any direction or if you didn't know where we were going, any direction would do, but Josh had really made up his mind that we had just a little bit of traffic working on our website for SEO and it was, uh, we were trying to make it all come together. And then, so we decided that we were just going to double down and just do content. We were going to just try to make the most epic and wonderful and most thorough pieces of content we could possibly produce on any, any of the topics that we encountered. So uh, and he also decided at that point, he's like, you know what, I'm like, I want to be the number one natural health website in the world. Do you want to join up and be part of that mission? And he said, and I said, absolutely. And so that's when he started investing in, uh, that's when he started really, really investing in people. And so we were investing hardcore into like, you know, I came on to do some of the WordPress and tech stuff. And uh, at the same time, one week before I got hired, uh, we actually had uh, Ethan join our company as the chief, as the editor in chief. And he comes from Rodale uh, magazines and he was actually just, uh, I mean, honestly, he's, he's a godsend of the company and one of my dear friends at the company here, but uh, you know, he came and he met, he actually kind of a, kind of an ironic little fate twist of fate uh, several years prior to this. He actually, uh, when he was working at Rodale, he did a partnership for that first fit program that I mentioned earlier, uh, selling it through the direct books platform that uh, Ethan was running there. And uh, there came a time and opportunity a couple of years later that Josh was at a mastermind saying, Hey, I need, I really need help. Uh, trying to grow my content website. I think I want to be the number one natural health website in the world. And do you know anybody? And this big group of people, one person raised their hand and said, I know who you need to bring on to your company and you already know who it is. Uh, or you already, you already know him. So you need to bring Ethan on. And so Ethan, Ethan decided to join the company uh, with us. And uh, from there, you know, he was really, uh, what's kind of funny is that he actually didn't know, um, I, I hope I don't mean to, you know, this, we talked about this before, so I hope it's not, uh, anything surprising to him when I say this, but he, he, he admits that he didn't know hardly anything about SEO at that point. So, and he, oh, by the way, he was hired at this co-working space. Uh, this is a picture of the co-working space when we couldn't afford that office yet, uh, right next to the Whole Foods that I was at. That was where we were kind of spreading time at. And so uh, he just started, so Josh was really, really, really in, tried to lay down importantly saying, hey, Ethan, don't start writing right away. Just get a feel for the landscape. Get a feel for what we're trying to do. Get a feel for SEO. Get a feel for uh, what, you know, the, the mission, the gravity, the research, all that kind of stuff. And so he spent the first couple of weeks just auditing everything that was going on and spending two to three hours a day learning about SEO, so a topic that he didn't, he didn't know anything about at the time. And so there's a picture of Rand, Neil, and Brian, of course, and uh, this is who we learned from. He learned everything he could based off of these three guys, uh, not, oh gosh, it's not, not even two and a half years ago at this point. 
And uh, so how did we know that these were the best places to learn? Well, because we Googled how to do SEO or how to SEO. And these are the people that were at the top of that list. And so we just started learning everything we could from Backlinko uh, to uh, Moz and of course, Neil. And uh, that we really got our hands on a single technique. And that single technique is, you know, the skyscraper technique, which is writing. We would basically go out and we would look at, you know, whatever we could find for the content. We were going to pull, we were going to take a look at all of it. And we decided we we're going to write a blog that's minimum, you know, 2,000 words, if not 3,000 or plus. It's going to have an infographic, if not two infographics. And it's going to be the most authoritative, well-written, just clearly concise article on any topic that we put our hands on. We, we decided it was going to be the best. And if somebody ever wrote a piece that was better, we would go back and we would rewrite ours so that it was the best piece. And I think there's a, there's a healthy mix of we're just really competitive people. Uh, but there's also this healthy mix that says like the other side of that healthy mix would be that we are really focused on making sure that you know, uh, I think it's Benjamin Franklin that says that every generation needs a revolution. And I really believe, and everybody at our company really believes that the revolution that we're facing right now is with our food and with preventative medicine, instead of waiting until it's after the symptoms have really progressed and then you have to fix it. How can you get ahead of as much of that as possible or restore uh, your ailments or anything that has happened to you using food as medicine lifestyle before we go seek uh, Western medicine techniques? So there's a big battle cry uh, at our company to uh, to make sure that we can do this. So he combined the one, the one SEO trick that we had, which is the skyscraper technique. Let's write the best article. That was the only strategy we had. And then we combined it with a lot of uh, Ethan's background at Rodeo, which would be, he, re, he constantly references what he calls the editorial standard. I wasn't familiar with this term, but it's really, you know, if, if you're a brand marketer and you understand the power of staying on brand, staying in the power of the brand, then you've got this, uh, um, this is a, this is a, <laughs> This makes me laugh every time. We had an article that was uh, called, on our, sitting on our website, you can see the date here, it's 2010, uh, April 8th there, uh, and we shared it from Facebook, and it was, the article was called, I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. Now, as you can tell, we did a lot of research into how we came up with that headline, you know, based off of keywords, people were definitely looking for a lot of that. So we were just writing content and we had knew nothing about strategy, nothing on it. So, so he came in and he really started cleaning up a lot of the brand, a lot of the research, retooling a lot of stuff. And then uh, from there in 2015, we then, uh, actually start hiring some editors. We've got Joe on our team, Leah, we have so many more, and I'm not going to be able to mention everybody on our team today, but these guys, but these guys were just, they are still on our team and they were, you know, just complete game changers for our organization and continue to be uh, even, even to this day, but it was just a wonderful time in our history to bring that on there. And then that's when we realized that we needed to go from, instead of publishing, you know, like six articles at once and then going dark for one to two months based off of when we could get the next batch ready, uh, we actually decided we were going to do one article I believe we began with one article a week where we were dropping it and then we moved to as quickly as we could into a single article a day. When you're producing a long form article a day. Uh, it can be, that can be a lot of manpower that you got to bring on there. And I have this picture of Stephen Colbert down there because if you guys are familiar and watching, you know, what's happened with YouTube over the past, gosh, six months, specifically the last three months, uh, there is, there's a lot of emphasis on the, the, as they, as they continue to wage war with all of the major cable networks, and uh, YouTube, or sorry, not YouTube, it is YouTube, it, it, as they wage war with video, who's gonna be the best video and most elite video platform? Is it gonna be Facebook or is it gonna be YouTube? And what happens is, is that YouTube has completely changed their algorithm and you saw all the creators kind of lash back out because they can't afford uh, to produce content as regularly as a fully, you know, a fully productionized, you know, a studio show like CBS or NBC or any of those guys, but that's why you uh, consistently you see Stephen Colbert at the top of the trending charts as well as the most featured on the homepage because of their predictability. And uh, a phrase that's a, another phrase that Ethan likes to say a lot is that Google never sleeps. And so that's why we tried to move it more into that kind of standardized cadence where we're producing content every single week, every single day at the same times, really pushing it out on a schedule, making sure that we're hitting the top of the news charts for Google with new health information and making sure that they could consistently rely on us for being a continued and new source of information. So that takes us to 2016. And you see the same chart here, 2016, where we were down to number 15 there. Uh, you can see that the mind body green was at the top. Well, actually, I've blocked out the number one competitor at the top there. Uh, but you can see that we've moved from number 15 to number seven. And so we went from 28,000th uh, largest website, almost 29th largest, 29,000th largest website in the world, all the way to 12,279, which is pretty awesome. And uh, we went from uh, the website that you saw earlier to uh, something like this. We had a wonderful partner who came and helped us redesign our website. And uh, this, is our, this is our website for a period of about two and a half years. And then, uh, which brings us to 2017, earlier this year, that's uh, the SEO and all that content that Ethan was writing and producing and, and making sure that we had that you can see that we went 
to the beginning, uh, near, let's see, this is January 2017, we were the second largest natural health website in the world, just following a standardized cadence. And at this point, guys, we still didn't, we still didn't know a lot about technical SEO, and arguably we don't now. And so we were just writing a lot of content, making sure that it was the most authoritative piece. And I'm overly stressing how like simpleton we were at this time in our history, because I really want to show you the power of content, the power of uh, skyscraper because we're gonna get into it a little bit later but just how little domain authority we had but yet we were getting all these views and all these rankings just from the articles because we had a lot of page authority on single pages even without a whole lot of backlinks and so we're, we're gonna come back to there but there was a pretty exciting time in the company's history to get to number two in, a, in, in two short years so uh, at that point I decided we just kind of, we decided collectively that well we, what if, if we're doing this well and we're just like writing a lot and that is ultimately our strategy up until the point was just writing a lot could we hire somebody internally, a full-time person to help us. And that's when Jimmy joined our team. And this is a picture of like his job description when I was looking for him. Uh, it says, you know, this is my, uh, the objectives and key responsibilities of this SEO person. And you can see the highlight there on the third one is, can they read an article a day from Neil Patel, Quick Sprout, or Search Engine Land and just execute whatever they said, just go do it. Like we don't have to be creative. We don't have to do anything. We just have to follow the thought leaders, keep our ear to the ground and just execute. And so that's when Jimmy joined us and he absolutely can. He could actually be he could actually be writing a lot of the, the cutting edge stuff, which is really, really awesome. But uh, yeah, we came in and we started tooling a lot of that stuff. So, and then uh, he actually came from, uh, in a former part of his life, he actually worked for a company called 97th Floor. And so 97th Floor uh, was an SEO agency and they're, they're in 500 just like we are. Uh, they're incredible. They actually came in and joined us at the same time. Uh, so we worked with an agency and we worked with uh, an individual that used to work at that agency and they just get along really great. And so uh, they came in, I think you can see PJ and I'm not sure if Joe's back there or not, but PJ and Joe over at 97th floor, those guys are, uh, those guys are like, they're part of our team. They just come in, they contribute so much value to us. And so we started working with a killer agency to really get a lot of our technical stuff in order and start building our backlink program. And that's when everything really, really started taking off. And I can't wait to show you some of these results. So, uh, and then of course, uh, we just had launched a new website. So you can see the mobile view on this on the right there. You can see kind of the new homepage on the left. And uh, just so that you, if you guys uh, have short-term memory loss, uh, this is uh, the before and after of what the website used to look like versus what it looked like now. And uh, oh gosh, I, I can't, I still can't believe we used to we used to have that. But it's, you know, that's, if you guys are ever embarrassed about, I think it's uh, Eric Reese, the guy who created LinkedIn. He says, if you're not utterly embarrassed of your MVP or your minimum viable product, um, you launch too late because you just got to just, you just got to go and you got to go and you got to go. And that's kind of what we did. And so, you know, we're here now, but I don't want ever, anybody to think that that's how we came out of the gate. I mean, if we would have known the theme forest or we could go buy a website template for 40 bucks back in the day, we would have done that. But uh, this is probably uh, what was just available to us now. And that's what we took action on. So uh, let's talk about screenshots. I took some, uh, so this, uh, I'm really excited to share this next part with you because uh, when I submitted our, when Neil asked me to do this talk and kind of share just kind of our, just our journey a little bit and our story, there was this, um, uh, I told you, know, he asked, what's our latest business at? And I said, 16 million. And this was, you know, a couple months ago. And so uh, I'm really excited to show you that. I took fresh screenshots just a couple hours ago, just to make sure that you guys got the most relevant stuff. So this is a similar web uh, this morning. And you can see that uh, we're actually at 22.29 million in a single month. So when I say that uh, we were on the road and still climbing, you can see that that's where uh, let's see, uh, the 17th of you know, May, 7, you know, May 2017, that's when, I think that's about when Neil and Vasil asked me to, to do this talk, and that was right at 16. We've just been growing and growing and growing since. And so now we're at 22.29. And back to that number one competitor, uh, this is, uh, again, not being mentioned, but this number one competitor that was on our list, this is their orange line is them tracking through the year, and that blue line is us tracking through the year. And you can see just this morning, uh, they kind of announced or released some new new information that says that we actually took a lot of their share from them or they just lost a lot of rankings. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we are actually now outpacing them for the total site traffic where we're not just the fastest growing natural health website in the world anymore. We're actually the fastest growing and the largest as of uh, as of any time in the past week or so, and especially today. So that's really, really exciting. And uh, we're waiting for Alexa to confirm that. I think the updated reports that we had said that was this morning too. So we're really, really excited. And uh, of course, there's a little confetti thing. But uh, just to put that in perspective um, for everybody, uh, this was uh, this is branded searches. This is Google Trends data. This is branded searches for our number one competitor since you know the beginning of time. And you can see that he was always bigger. And then you can see that that red line there is DrX.com. And you can see that we kind of came uh, to this rise to power, if you will, for branded searches. Look, people looking for us. Uh, but just a little bit of perspective. Those are the same two lines there, and uh, that's us against uh, fidget spinners <laughs> in the last uh, year. And you can see that no matter how big we get, there. Are, I think it's a uh, there's always a bigger fish, and so you can you just you just. I'm trying to show some magnitude behind 
uh, one, the wave that we've been riding with fidget spinners, but two, uh, just the amount of searches that are surely out there that no, none of us can really fathom how much is offered, how much is available to us. Uh, no matter how much we do research, we forget that there's these massive pockets of veins that Google has access to. And uh, it's really exciting, of course, to, to get your hands on some of that stuff. So a few things we do well. Uh, I'm going to take a look. This is the, if you guys have seen that uh, Simon Sinek TED Talk, which is, you know, one of the best 15 minutes on YouTube, in my opinion. And uh, he, call, he, ta he talks about the diffusion of innovation which is this chart that we're looking at here. Uh, the diffusion of innovation has the, um, it has the innovators and on the left and it's got the early adopters, the early majority, the late majority and the laggards. And uh, you can see that here, you know, you've got people like Neil and Rand and everybody, they're coming in, they're actually trying to find what is like the new innovations, they're talking with Google, they're trying to figure all this stuff out and they're just doing a fantastic job of staying cutting edge and then their whole business model is how do they use this information themselves as well as how do I tell all their people about it to keep you guys informed and this is us uh, we don't actually um, we don't actually try to innovate hardly anything we just try to listen to exactly what they say and do it as fast as we can and unfortunately in some contexts we are in the early majority and not the early adopters but uh, we try to keep we try to ride that fence as close as we can as soon as the article comes out how fast can we take action and uh, just as a fun reference <laughs> my mom and dad signed up for their first mailchimp account last month and uh, they've been running an e-commerce company for like 13 years and they're like no email doesn't work email doesn't work email doesn't work can anybody guess what happened as soon as they actually came out with uh, uh, as soon as they came out with their uh, mailchimp account it worked and so there's just this uh, unbelievable like uh, capacity for us to no matter what no matter what stage you're entering the game uh, just go ahead and get in it and just uh, enjoy the ride because it's 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 available to us so a few other things that, so when you're speaking to that when we're talking about early adoption let's talk about some of the things that we are um, that we are trying to make sure that we took advantage of it or that we were early adopters in. And so of course, at this point, AMP is like old news, uh, but this is one of the first things that, one of the things that we implemented quicker than all of our competitors. And if you look at a lot of our competitors, they still don't have anything, or they still don't have AMP. And that's one of the, uh, for anybody that's thinking about whether or not they should go custom or if they should look at other platforms versus WordPress, I actually really, really think, uh, I really, really think that this is uh, one of the super advantages of WordPress is that because you have all this access to the tools and the libraries, so that way we don't have to build any of these tools. As soon as the AMP came out, we just installed the plugin after it got out of beta. And uh, we did have to do some fixes to it ourselves and then we actually tried to contribute to the, to the real uh, to the to the repos, if we can, if there's if we see a feature that's kind of missing, so the thing we'll actually try to reach out to the people who make the apps and try to make the apps better. Instead of doing it ourselves, we actually just try to help them do it better, so that way we can keep using it because they keep updating it, and that's their business model. And then we're basically helping each other. Uh, another thing that we're super interested in taking on, uh, taking action on, is of course this giant switch over to HTTP2, uh, which is doing. Uh, gosh, this is going to do amazing things for I'm. I'm geeking out about it, of course, for our company, but I'm geeking out about it as a consumer because could you imagine if the entire web loaded uh, two times faster? Like how great is that gonna be? Because nothing, nothing's more annoying than just sitting on your page and just being like waiting, 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 and then it comes in. And so, uh, especially advertising and all that kind of stuff. So if it, can, if it can load to the web that much faster, I think it's gonna be awesome. This is something that we're investing in right now, of course. And then uh, we were actually one of the first people to, in our, in our space, uh, to switch our entire website over to HTTPS, and uh, when we did that, I think I, 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 you'd have to double check me. So don't don't publish this stat, but I believe that we saw a 20% lift in our entire search traffic, um, not overnight, within the same week though. And so we switched our entire website over to HTTPS, and you know you can imagine that with the magnitude of volume that we have, that 20% is a pretty significant statistic, and so that's uh, or pretty pretty significant. Uh, volume of traffic increase and so I would encourage you guys if you haven't done the complete switch over yet uh, I would definitely make sure that you do that um, and then coconut oil uh, this is uh, this is an example of the snippets uh, which is really really uh, interesting we accidentally because of our site volume fell into a lot of these but one of the things that we started investing in as early as we could uh, uh, much thanks to 97th floor just making sure that, that we were kept keeping up to date with all the latest and greatest stuff that uh, they came in and they were really helping us uh, you're, we're going to talk about snippets twice because we did try to take action right away, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we're trying to invest in it a little bit further. And so uh, this is uh, rank zero, if you will, instead of just page one. So we actually got a lot of page ones and a lot of rank zeros, which are really great. And then the skyscraper technique, as I said, this is really kind of our, um, if we're a one trick pony, this is it, <laughs> which is like, I don't, know, I don't know what to do. So let's just write the best article that we possibly can. And let's just call it a day. 
And so, and I would say that the other thing that we did really, really well is we invested in really great partners. And so the partner on the left is the guys that we keep mentioning there. Uh, you guys can use my affiliate link at 97 floor slash Mike Danner. That's a joke, guys. I, I just really love them. So if you guys can do business with them, that's great. Same thing with material that they came in and they helped us relaunch our, our new website. And I think I'm going to mention that a little bit later too. But uh, these guys just really made the difference for us and they really covered the gap. Uh, when we needed some help and I'm just really, really thankful. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly do an SEO talk without mentioning one, our own team. And of course our, our key partners that have really been with us along the way. And, uh, oh, this is another big one here. This is a, this is a big shift for us recently, actually in the last six months is, uh, we, I started talking with Neil on some things and he had a, he had a lot of great things to say about making sure that we refreshed old content. And then of course I went to his blog and I saw this article on the checklist for the thing. And so we started, so it used to be that we were actually producing 90% new content and 10% if the article completely like it's 404 ing and it's dying and it's, you know, in the ditch, like we'll, then we'll kind of look at spicing it up or doing whatever we can to it. Uh, we're actually shifting that up pretty dramatically. And so we're spending a lot more time now concentrating on making sure that we take articles that were performing really well and how can we, how can we bring them back up to be, to continue to be as successful as they possibly can uh, in, uh, in respect to what they used to be able to do. And of course, how can we continue to make our, our, our garden intending to it, make sure the weeds don't get through there. And of course, competitors are always coming in. So it's always good to make sure that you're keeping up to date uh, with what's happening in uh, in the space and making sure that it really is both, I said, for your business, we're competitive, but too, just to make sure that it is the best and single stop resource for any, com any customer of ours or any reader of ours who just wants the best information. Oh, and another thing that we started investing in is uh, you actually, so you just heard it from Hello Bar. We actually partnered with Hello Bar to do a lot of conversion optimization for uh, our website and their content upgrades and Lindsay has been nothing but just amazing. And Mike Camo, he, he showed, he gave us a bunch of uh, webinar strategy and a bunch of things. They just did such a great job for us and are continuing to. And so I would definitely, uh, I would definitely suggest investing into content upgrades and making sure that you can, um, that you can make sure that your customers not only are getting the upgrades on screen, like the third layer, if you will, it's like the opt-ins and the bumps and the uh, don't leaves and the exit pops and all that stuff. But this is a nice, uh, simple way to add, um, assistive content or nice, you know, a wine pairing of content of a PDF or something that goes with the article that's directly relevant to it. And you will get, um, one quick note is that when you start rolling these out, uh, you will start getting opt-ins like crazy, but make sure that you, uh, one of the things that I, uh, we found out just last week is make sure that you are looking at how many of those opt-ins are new, how many of those opt-ins are re-engaging with you, because uh, there's two things that you can learn from there is one is you have all these people who are already on your list and they're basically re-opting in and that tells you just how hungry they are for new content and information about essential oils or whatever that is that we're talking about. And I absolutely would encourage you guys to then find a way to sift those people who are basically double opting in and say, Hey, do you need information on this? Like, you know, cause they're, they're exactly what Lindsay said. Can it, can we offer you something that's a little bit more premium based off of your like mega high intent? And so there's a lot of good data nested in there. So, uh, a few things that we're getting better at that we're not so good at opportunity areas, if you will, is right now we don't write any content for our blog uh, or sorry, we don't write any content for our blog for our store. And so we just have basically the completely independent. We have this super site and then we have uh, our store. And one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to get our organic placements to be ranked for our products inside uh, in, in the SERP. We want to get them up onto uh, up onto the top ring. So it'd be like a Dr. Axe article and then it would be a store blog article and then the store product offering. And that way, like no matter which way you want to, which way you want to consume it, if you're looking for a product right now, or if you're looking for content related to that product, or if you're looking for just, I want to learn about, you know, uh, vitamin C and how to, how to do that. You would basically cover our entire base there. So that's something that we're getting a lot better at. And uh, when you play the game of snippets, uh, you win or you die, because as more people are getting into this, we are definitely trying to make sure that we, are staying super, super up to date on making sure that we can uh, not just earn the placements of the snippets, but actually like keep an audit and make sure because when you have this massive content library that you have, you've got to, we got to do a lot of work to make sure that you, that you continue to earn those placements and make sure that you have that because it's not, it's not like you have, uh, it's not like you just move down and shift in the rankings. You either get this placement or you get kicked off the placement and then your traffic can dramatically change based off of that. And so make sure that again, back to the tending to your garden, make sure that you're watching uh, what's happening and, and why it's happening and what's going on and who's competing with you, et cetera. Oh, another thing that I, I can't stress enough, and of course, every time you hear an SEO talk, you always hear you always hear the same things, which is, you know, how can uh, how can you focus more on the basics? And it's so boring, but I promise you, at scale, 
the basics are almost more important than cutting edge, where you are just trying, you're trying to sweep across your entire catalog. And so right now, uh, my team is working with our content team to try to make a lot of uh, automated reports. We have a new analyst in our team who's just doing some amazing stuff, uh, making sure that we're doing our 404 analysis and that, you know, what we found is that we're actually really tight on a lot of our links and make sure that it's good. But what we're finding is that people are sharing our content and there's so many people sharing their content and they're putting in like wrong links. And it's not our fault, you know, that they're putting in the wrong links, but we're gonna take responsibility for that because it's our responsibility to Google and to the customer that they don't hit the 404 page, that we find out what they were looking for, we find out why they were looking for it, and then we steer them to the right piece, uh, the right piece of content to make sure they get there. And of course, uh, this uh, I love this infographic at the bottom here, which is the one second delay in page load times. You know, you've got 11%. Fewer page views, 16% decrease in customer satisfaction, and 7% loss in conversions. And I've seen, I know Amazon ran a big test like this. Uh, all these guys, site load times and investing. If you got, oh, and that's a takeaway at Homer for you guys right now. If you guys don't have a Cloudflare account on the $20 a month business account, uh, you're welcome. You can you can count uh, you can count the uh, SEO summit uh, a win. Just go sign up for that account. Do the one thing they ask you to, which is turn it on, and it'll dra it'll dramatically decrease your page load times, which is uh, which is wonderful. And of course, another thing that we're getting way better at is uh, this entire new site launch was developed uh, by um, uh, Kate, or not, it wasn't developed by Kate, or it was led by Kate on our team. And she just did this fantastic job of making sure that we were understanding how people were using, this, were using the website and working with the right partner to make sure that it was mobile first. Instead of mobile, uh, oh yeah, we're going to do mobile too, but making sure that it was mobile first, making sure it's beautiful, easy to use, easy to click around on, easy to navigate, all of that stuff. And so uh, we actually went through and created this um, with our new site launch. We tried to we tried our best to make sure that it was designed mobile first, and then uh, and then go back over to the desktop and expand outwards. So that was a, that was an interesting sort of shift for us because you know we like you guys we're sitting in front of 27 inch uh, you know monitors and our website is beautiful and we're like oh aren't we so proud and then you go look at your Google Analytics and you're like oh 90% of our visits it's not 90% it's like 70% but 70% of our traffic is mobile and you'd be like oh okay well then you go look look at thing and be like oh man the pop-ups are covering the whole page and you got to fix this and you got to fix that it's it can get a little unruly and I promise you that uh, just walking through. Uh, seeing it and seeing it, seeing the customer path in the analytics of like whether they're on mobile or whether they're doing whatever, and then uh, shifting over and actually walking through that experience yourself, you will see a lot of things that you didn't realize about your own website. And I, I, I can't encourage you guys to do that enough or have somebody on your team that can do that for you. Uh, and then another thing that we, we're not super great at yet, but are, we're getting a lot better real fast is that we, our social team is doing a fantastic job of pairing with our content team now. And they're basically rewriting our entire like YouTube SEO playbook over the past uh, six months. And they're just, they're, they're, they're doing a complete overhaul of that. And we've got like 800,000 fans on, on YouTube now. And so that's adding a lot of viewership that's not really counted towards our page views, but we're trying to make sure that those articles and those YouTube videos play in synchronicity with each other. And uh, I think Neil mentioned it on his talk earlier this morning about what, uh, uh, what an important thing it is to get video constantly being a video a day being dripped out. And so we're making, we're trying to make sure that we do that with all of our stuff to make sure that we can, uh, the YouTube, uh, the, sorry, the new YouTube clips are coming out and the new, uh, the new content is coming out two articles a day and making sure that we don't actually try to keep those in this in necessarily in sync. But we try to make sure that if the YouTube article is related to the actual article or sorry, the YouTube video is related to the actual article that we make sure that they have similar keywords and they work really well with each other without being like keyword stuffing. And so that way in the SERP, it doesn't look like it's exactly the same thing. It looks like it's a, it's an assistive thing. And then um, another thing that we're doing better about is we're expanding and we're putting into uh, we're moving into pet nutrition and fitness and recipes. Uh, and you can see you can imagine if your if your personality behind your brand has guns like that, it's kind of it's kind of shocking that we haven't done a lot of fitness content. I, we have, but we want to take it seriously and and really just kind of uh, rub shoulders with bodybuilding and just you know just inspired by a lot of the work that they do and just kind of uh, approach it from more of a naturalist or a holistic perspective. And so we're really really excited about uh, upping our content. And so, and then another thing that we do not do well, uh, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say this is we don't, we do not do backlinking very well at all. And that's what I was mentioning earlier that, uh, is the skyscraper technique being that was our one trick pony, that was our one trick and one, one trick pony is on that, on all of those, uh, charts that I showed you about where we were ranking, no matter how many people were below us, like if we were number 15, you could go down to number 35 on that list, all the way up to number one. Every single person on that list uh, had more domain authority than we did, but yet we kept climbing in the rankings. And so uh, we, I wouldn't say that, the, I don't take that as like a sign of disrespect for domain authority, like we don't need it. Like that, imagine what we could have done if we would have taught, if we would have treated backlinking 
uh, as seriously as we took our content writing from the beginning. And so now we're getting really serious about backlinking. We're doing a lot more with PR. We're doing a lot more with uh, outreach and asking bloggers if, what they think about our content or products. And it's just been really, really fun to meet with all the people in the space and get there. And so, uh, and then of course, this is, uh, we're expanding international. It was basically at Neil's suggestion uh, on, on the phone one day. He said, man, you really got to take your stuff into uh, international markets. And so based off of his recommendations, we're actually uh, proceeding out of the U.S. and in full translated sites. He's got some great articles and Oz has some great articles. There's so many good articles out there about that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the tactics of it, but I, I really think that that's something that you guys can invest in uh, for sure. Once you guys reach, feel like you reach a, a critical mass of some kind, because it's only a little bit more work to then get double the value out of all of the content that you already have in another country, which is fantastic. And then uh, uh, another big thing, lastly, in the things that we're going to start doing better is now that we have such a volume of keyword research uh, to do uh, based off of all the things that we're producing and, you know, car, uh, content and all that stuff, which we're really trying to tune our, our internal algorithms where we're actually saying, okay, based off of searches and complexity and difficulties, and we're basically merging a lot of SEM rush data with Ahrefs and and our own proprietary tools to try to figure out where we can start writing our, it's kind of steering our content machine and into different sections of, uh, of Google to make sure that we can continue to find, uh, you know, low hanging fruit continues to get higher, but we continue to get bigger. And so it's this nice little mix of what is approachable versus what, you know, could you imagine what it would take them to write number one on uh, Google for like, protein, you know, I think about how many people want that keyword, et cetera. But those are the types of things that we're now trying to figure out how we can do. And uh, it's no longer purely low and hanging fruit, but it is, it is exciting to, to look at how all that's coming together. Okay. Some advice that we wish we'd had uh, when we were starting a little off sooner. Uh, as soon as you can, find work with a killer agency. I said, I said enough, a coach or a mentor. And of course, if they're a great agency, like uh, the ones that I mentioned before, or the great agencies that you guys find, or if they come as a referral, uh, they should be all of the above. They should be willing to tell you when you don't need something and they should be willing to tell you when you do need something and you should understand the difference and they, you should be able to trust them uh, to, to tell you the difference, which I think is really, really important. So I would say that that's a, uh, definitely something that you, uh, we, we should have done sooner. And uh, this is a big one for us is that checklist. Uh, Ethan, as great a writer as he is, as great a manager as he is, as great a person and good looking and all the above, the one thing that I think he did really awesome for us is that he came and he made sure that it was standard, it was standardized and it was making sure that we had an editorial checklist to make sure the quality was there for the content and we had a technical checklist to make sure that every article had an infographic. It was the, we had the semantic HTML in place, load times, all that kind of stuff. And that checklist continues to get more thorough. But I would say that that's something that I would invest in sooner than later, which is instead of just putting up content and winning once with an article, how can you win with every article? And that's not going to happen unless you really deputize it to somebody on your team, a project manager, or yourself in a really thorough checklist to make sure that you're just doing a great job again and again and again and again. And then of course, keep writing what's best for your customer because every algo update, uh, with the exception of one, uh, increased our rankings because you know, most people are concerned about rankings going down and that's gonna happen to us eventually. Uh, but every update so far, other than that one which just flatlined, it has actually increased our rankings based off that because we continue to get uh, closer and closer to what the customer's wanting and Google's seeing that and they're actually saying, hey, this is better for the customer. So they actually are increasing our stuff. And of course, uh, and when you're doing a new website, <laughs> Make sure you pick the right partner. I cannot say that enough. I we tried so many vendors, we tried so many things. It was just, it was just, uh, it was, it was way too difficult to try to keep all that straight. So finding somebody there, and of course, uh, make sure that when you whiteboard then for your content calendar, that you write it down, that you stick to it, that you hire against it, you you hold to that cadence, and you then you refresh that content, and you make sure that you actually commit to a strategic plan to make sure that you're not spreading yourself too thin across too many things. Make sure you go after segments, that you can own that segment, and that segment might be a very, very tiny niche where you get three articles around it, or it might be a broader niche like digital marketing, like Neil's doing, which is thousands of articles, but you gotta start small and make sure that you corner, uh, corner very, very small pieces to it. And then, uh, okay, every, yeah, everybody usually asks me what's, what are the tools that power our SEO stack? Uh, it's really, uh, honestly, I hope, I hope it's underwhelming for you guys because it's just using, we just use the tools more than everybody else, but they're not fancy tools. So, or not fancy to say, they're not going to be tools you've never heard of. So SEM Rush, I think our entire content team is like refreshing SEM Rush dashboards like two to three times a day. And it's, uh, it's always fun when I'm logged into it and then, some, and then it'll tell you, uh, you've just been kicked out, a user XYZ just logged in. And so we all had to get our own accounts at some point. Uh, just because people were using it so much and it was great and then of course uh, we actually just recently fell into a or fell in love with ahrefs based off of um, a lot of our consultants in 97 floor coming in saying that this is just the best tool in the markets so we use this a lot now which is fantastic and then uh, i use similar web a lot to check competitors and just see how we're doing 
Uh, we recently just rolled out Google Analytics Suite 360, uh, which is just an upgraded version of Analytics, Tag Manager, Optimize, and all that stuff. Uh, Basecamp 3 is where we hold down our products, uh, our, sorry, our content calendar. And uh, the most important thing above all the tools and all of the research and all of the hacks and tips and the 21 best converting headlines you can implement today is to make sure that you invest in one amazing and awesome team because uh, these are just a few of them. This doesn't do this doesn't do it justice at all. But uh, this is the most this is the best available picture that I had of just an incredible writing team, an incredible graphics team, an incredible social team. To make sure that your content is being taken care of because they're the ones that are going to go out and attend these conferences, hunt this information down to make sure that you're executing on it. And I just can't say enough nice things about everybody. And of course, the final recap to this entire presentation is that we're not creative. We don't. We don't know a lot of what to do or how to do it. All we do is just whatever Neil says. We, I subscribe and I read Neil's articles every week and I read Moz's articles every week and I read Backlinks articles. And we just say, all right, which ones we're going to tackle? And we just go, they say it, we do it. They say it, we do it. And that's, that's about it. So thank you. Awesome, man. Wow, that's such a lot of great information. While you were sharing, we've got people saying uh, that uh, what a great case study, uh, really enjoyed all of the stuff that you shared. So if you've got a couple of more minutes, we've got about 10 minutes for some Q and A. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great guys. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions and be of any help that I possibly can. Awesome. Yeah. So the first one, uh, somebody's asking about one of your slides. How do you track the featured snippets uh, you show up for aside from randomly trying deep word variations? Oh, sure. No, that's, it's a, it's a great question. I actually don't have, uh, that's why I put the keyword snippets. Uh, I'm going to adjust this so it, not when I see the camera looks at you. Uh, I actually, this is what the reason that it was actually in the things we do well and the things we don't do well category is because we're still trying to dial and figure a lot of that out. Uh, but I, um, when our, our next, uh, our next trip with 97 floor, when they come down, they're basically going to roll out, you know, help us roll out a strategy to make sure that we keep a lot of that data uh, up there. And I think the new tools are all completely updated now. Uh, with uh, the ability to track whether you're not get, you're getting rank zero snippets. And so that's your globalized view to make sure that you can sort by which ones you have versus which ones you lost and try to reclaim. And so I, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, very interesting. The second question by uh, Anastasia is when you lose a snippet placement, uh, what do you do to try and get your content back, to, 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 try, to try and get it back? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's um, there's a couple of different ways, and, we're, and I'm still learning a lot about this. Uh, Jimmy, uh, who honestly should have given this, this talk instead of me, uh, is our SEO person. He handles a lot of this stuff. But I think one of the important things to dis distinguish is making sure that um, there's the just like uh, just like SEO, there's the there's the editorial side of SEO, and then there's the technical side of SEO. So making sure that you're uh, making sure that you are tooled and your rich snippets and all that stuff is really configured technically properly and making sure that it's been submitted to Google Search Console properly, the articles are being re-indexed. There's the technical side of that. And then also making sure um, one of the strategies that I learned from Neil's uh, uh, Neil's webinar that he that he teaches on his website is when you watch it, he's, he gives you the strategy for going and updating your headlines where you actually go back and you look at uh, you test basically are doing copywriting tests because they Google's looking for engagement, right? They're looking for is the snippet answering the question. So there's the like I said, there's the technical side of it, but then there's also making sure that you can uh, offer them compelling and interesting ways to communicate the same information that somebody else might communicate. If that makes sense, so you've got to make sure that that copy is being tested. Now it's harder to test because you instead of being able to get data the same day or the same week from most of the tests you run on your own landing pages, you kind of have to do kind of rough testing about in weak blocks because it takes while, Google for a while to come up and then all of a sudden a competitor enters and takes it from you and then you got to take it back. And so it, it's, a, it's a game, uh, honestly, and, uh, and one, one that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mary's got a question. The slide that you were showing, what tool are you using for the, uh, ranking, the rankings of the top of natural health sites you were showing? Was it Alexa? There was sure. Uh, the rankings are indexed by Alexa. The categories of who qualifies as a natural health website is actually uh, a proprietary piece of rule set that we use uh, that's shared amongst kind of the natural health community. And so, but yeah, it's Alexa that's actually doing the rankings. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. And Ashken's asking, do you still write uh, one 2000 word article a day? Uh, I believe last I heard we are at two and we are now trying to do three a day. So, uh, but don't, don't hold me to that. that. That would be up to our content team to, to see how, what they feel about that. But I believe it's two a day right now. Gotcha. And, so. and Jake is asking, do your multiple options for what's your number one health goal question lead to different funnels? When someone clicks all of the above, are they subscribed to multiple email campaigns at once? 
Uh, so I actually just had, uh, we flew somebody up from Austin into Nashville to retool our entire back to like our entire front to end email strategy or, or rather our contact strategy. And that is actually something that is being re retooled right now. Basically uh, the, the summary version is it would give you kind of a mini series of like, Hey, you know, this is based off what you were looking for. And then it kind of pulls you into the regular newsletter with everybody. But we are now actually trying to retool your entire experience using a lot of uh, machine learning and AI to say, you know, here's what basically it's a giant version of Netflix. People who watch this, also watched and so you can basically it starts learning and saying okay people who like uh people who like essential oil articles they also like these articles on the thing or people who like protein also like this product and so that's something that's being completely re, uh, reinvented right now so uh but the, what it used to be was kind of a mini series is, is probably the best way to explain got it okay regina's asking when you were just starting out did you publish your content on your website's blog only or did you uh publish on other high-ranking blogs as well uh, we, I believe most of it. So the, the advantage for our partner networks is that Josh had a radio show and a podcast at the time that really did really, really well. If you guys have never seen him on YouTube or seen him on there, you know, Neil was saying that he can do most of those things, uh, most of his videos in a single take. Josh can do like 20 minutes in a single take. Like he just like, he just goes and he's just this content and machine. And it's really just kind of cool to watch, especially now that I've told you that it's all one take. Cause now you're kind of, it's like when you're watching something live and you're sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for them to make a mistake and they don't. And so um, that content and that video stuff got syndicated to other people and podcast was obviously syndicated across all those websites. And that was kind of what we are, our original backlinks, if you will. And so we, I, we didn't actually do a whole lot of writing on other networks, I believe. Uh, and most of it was just published to ourselves. And then we'd ask people to get on the newsletter and then we would just reshare it back. And we really grew a lot of grassroots off of uh, the clinic that he had started that was so successful. Gotcha. Very interesting. Another good question from Anastasia. How do you, how did you originally pick uh, keywords like two or three years ago to write posts about? Seems like your oh. content is wide and not deep or might have been yeah. wide not deep. This, this is a question that I almost feel bad answering, um, <laughs> but I'm hoping it's inspiring to a few of you. Um, we cheated because Josh is like one of the most like forerunning like people on the edge of what is going to be coming in. So like, you know, all these people will tell, every marketer will tell you if you can find a wave and ride a wave, like a trend that's coming in the marketplace, uh, that's the best thing you should do. Uh, getting on the fidget spinners, getting on drop shipping, getting on whatever that, that's kind of the stuff that's hot for the past couple of years, especially now, is just these giant waves. Imagine if you were cheating and you had the guy who knew what the wave was gonna be before it came in. Right. And so Josh is just because he was on the forefront of all that nutrition and all that gut health space and all that information. Like it was, like I said, that's what I feel bad. It wasn't really, it, there was definitely research involved and there was definitely lots of like gut checking uh, against data to make sure we're, we're extremely data heavy here at, at Dr. X. But uh, I would say that it, it, he was, he's the, he was the thought leader in a lot of the space. And so we were basically writing about stuff um, in two ways and I would start three ways. So there was the stuff that Josh just knew was absolutely going to be hot and we would write about that. But I would say bigger than that is we would go out and we would find out what was tons of searches, but they weren't answering specific questions. So there might be this huge article on coconut oil or whatever we're talking about here, but there's not ask, answering the questions because he was a nutritionist. You'd be like, well, that's not what they want to know about coconut oil. That's just a lot of information about coconut oil. And so then we would title the article in the form of a question, which is what is coconut oil even good for? And, 70, and it says 77 uses or something like that. And so that's the second form of content. And the third form of content, uh, would be definitely the keyword driven research, which is you just jump in and you start looking at all the stuff that's indexed there. But it can be a giant black, SEM rush, just like Google can be a giant black hole if you don't kind of already have some knowledge about the health space to make sure that you do what you're doing. So I would say that pairing up with an industry expert, even if you just, like, let's say that you're writing for, um, you know, uh, electricians or something like that. And I, you go find one of your super nerdy friends or even a contractor that's in your local neighborhood and say, hey, can I just take you out for a day? And you just tell me what sucks about the space and all that kind of stuff. Because I really want to write more about that. But it, finding that industry expert that you're pairing up with can be a game changer because they're the innovators uh, on that diffu diffusion curve. They're the innovators providing a lot of that space. And then, you know, the people that you want to be right there is the early adopter of writing about what's happening in the innovation space. Right. Okay, great, man. Listen, that's all the quick time that we've got for questions today. How can people get in touch with you if they want to follow you? Obviously, the website. Yeah, absolutely. DrAx.com, guys, if there's, um, if there's articles that you guys, I would hope that everyone gets on there um, from a couple of perspectives. One is just our content is really good. But two, uh, you know, we're winning all kinds of awards for marketing. 
and uh, trying things. And we don't do nearly as well as we should, and we're going to continue to get better and better. But if you guys just want to jump in our funnels to see how it all works, uh, like I said, the thing that's kind of the wild card right now is that everything is being kind of turned over to machine learning and AI. So your experience is actually going to be very, very different than everybody else's experience, but you can still learn a lot from it. And so I would say if, you, if you're just a health nut or want to get healthier, jump in our website. If you want to learn about more marketing and to see how we do things, jump in our website. And if you're looking for an amazing job and you want to come join one of the fastest growing companies in uh, Tennessee and the country, uh, I'm always looking for people on my team and so and our team. So we'd love to have you. Okay, Michael Danner. Thanks, man. Great to talk to you. All for right. Sure. Everybody, absolutely. For everybody else out there, we're going to be back in about five minutes with Vasil and I to talk about the next sessions and uh, answer a lot of your questions. So give us five minutes and we'll call the audience into the next session. Thanks. Bye-bye.